Hi, everyone, and welcome to the design team meeting for the Adult Learning Zone. Tonight is Thursday, October 8th, and my name is Jennifer Magill, and we have with us tonight Aaron and Gilbert and Joe, and unfortunately, Brian came earlier, <laughs> about an hour earlier, and uh, and so we'll have to share the recording with him later. And I hope Gio can um, join us as well. And uh, as we started to say before we turn the recording on, the focus of tonight's discussion is um, to generate some discussion and opinion around whether we should um, align ourselves with the OER Commons, uh, possibly creating our own hub, or conversely, if we should go down the path of um, branching out on our own and using our adultlearningzone.org website um, to to house the resources that are created by the service learners. So with that preface, um, Aaron, it sounds like you, you guys um, started to have some back channeling on this through email over the last couple of weeks. You want to kind of bring uh, bring us up to speed on, on what, what the thoughts are on those two different options? Well, you know, I was of the opinion that maybe we should consider using something that we that's already out there just to kind of not worry about that end and just focus on the instructional design aspect. But Bill Gilbert, I'll ask him to comment. He made some good points in an email he sent out to, uh, to me. Um, it was on Tuesday. So maybe he can share kind of his thoughts because I think he had some good, good observations about the upside of maybe, um, you know, using our, using our own, uh, our own space. So I'll let him talk on that. If he's, if he's willing. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm passing the buck to you right now. So go ahead. <laughs> Cause I thought, I thought what you had to say was good. So if you could articulate that, that would be excellent. Yeah. I'm just going to go back to my email here. And I mentioned uh, that, uh, you know, we looked at the OER and uh, we looked at, uh, like you mentioned before, and also that was brought to the table about creating the own space from within. And I thought that was a, a really good uh, parallel uh, and still be able to keep our brand, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but I also felt that the original goal and, and having worked with Jennifer before in previous project, uh, just as, you know, as an instructional designer and, uh, uh, and keeping with the standard that we had before, I thought that was an excellent opportunity for a lot of instructional designers to come together and piece together a website of our own making and our own choosing and our own design. So, you know, with our, you know, uh, background and, 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 you know, uh, experience, I certainly think that we can uh, sustain ourselves and, uh, you know, certainly making more, more of an impact and okay. target specific uh, instruction for, uh, either adult learners or adult uh, educators. Yeah, you bring up two really good points. One being the branding piece, because that does kind of rub me the wrong way that we'd be <laughs> starting out as a new organization and then defaulting to somebody else's, albeit a great uh, site. That, that So your, your point is very well taken there. And then uh, your second point, exactly. We have people who do this for a living, um, <laughs> so you know, you'd think we'd be able to do at least as well as, as what they have out there. Um, and I guess that, um, and it, were there any more, those were the two main things. Did you have any other sub, sub comments to that? No, not really. Not at this point. Um, and then I guess it, what it would boil down to, it does it have to be an either or like, could we use, given we have a, a group starting a very, potentially a very large group starting in January or February timeframe rather, um, that we do something within the OER Commons and then at the same time um, take that opportunity to do, as you suggest, to create our own. So, you know, it could almost be like a, uh, an interim step and see how it goes and then also uh, in the background continue on with a path of, of developing our own. Um, which obviously you're design or developing on two platforms, but right. I guess my biggest fear, or, and I guess question to you, to all of you, um, what do you think would be involved in us trying to do this on our own before February? Do you think we could have something in place, or um, does that seem like a stretch? I guess the first question from my perspective would be. Um, you know, we have the same parameters uh, that we did before in creating instruction. 
uh, you know, limiting ourselves to uh, uh, simply PowerPoint and uh, adding, uh, you know, uh, case studies or, um, you know, some type of um, real life situation to uh, to the uh, to the instruction. So I'm not really quite sure what what your intentions were. Yeah, and that's, and that's that's kind of the, um, the the part two of your group, and that's something that Joe and um, and and Brian were going to chew on is what the deliverables will look like, and I think that's your point. And um, mm -hmm. for based on what the SMEs were saying in the in the survey we sent out for them, it, it really appears their consensus was our audience is instruction um, instructors, so adult basic education instructors. So. Um, so to your point, what we would be developing would be the resources that they would be able then to take and um, to use with their students. So it would be more along the lines of lesson plans with then maybe the PowerPoint lecture or, um, or whatever it may be in the activities and the exercises. Um, so those would be the documents then that the service learners would be developing and then storing on our um, site. So it really wouldn't be... And then the and other other things that they mentioned, um, we kind of have to kind of design the low lower lowest common denominator, I guess, the, in terms of technology. So our, our designers really won't be creating robust e-learning modules or things like that because, frankly, they don't. We don't know if they're going to even be able to run those on their end. Some of the folks were mentioning they're in in prisons and you know, mm -hmm. you know yeah. Is that th those types of technology may not even be available. Um, so I guess long-winded answer to your question, what we would be housing on that site would be pretty much like what we had done before, PowerPoints, um, links to YouTube videos, um, those types of things. So it's not particularly ch technically challenging for us to try to figure out a way to house that. So what do you guys think, uh, Aaron and, and Joe, in terms of some of the comments that that, um, that Gilbert and I were, were mentioning kind of across the board in terms of, uh, I think, Aaron, you said you originally were of the idea that we would align ourselves with the OER commons. What, what do you see now as some the pros and cons of that? Well, I had told Gilbert that, you know, I, I'm, I'm fine with either approach or if we wanted to try both. I mean, I think I, I don't really know what kind of traffic, what kind of hits the OER commons gets, and that's where you know, I thought, well, you know, if that's really would expose our materials to a bigger audience, I mean, that would be a goal, I think, is, you know, really a practical getting this stuff, this, you know, real high quality work that we're going to do and that, you know, the service owners are going to do and getting it in the most hands possible. And I didn't know what kind of traffic that mm -hmm. website got. And if it was used a lot, that's kind of what I was thinking was, how do we get it? get this into the hands of people who can actually benefit so mm -hmm. yeah I was talking to Amanda Duffy and um, I would try to pull it up a moment ago when we were when I was on with Brian and I couldn't couldn't find it right away somewhere I've got the link but um, her perspective she's one of the SMEs and she said um, they attempted to build out something very similar to what we're doing and um, uh, so she some, some things she mentioned were she she wasn't really thrilled with the uh, the layout in terms of how things were categorized and tagged and aligned with the um, college and career readiness standards. So it, it was a little bit clunky for people. And so there wasn't a lot of traction, which I think kind of gets to what you're saying. Um, but in terms of people's viewpoint of the credibility of OER Commons and whether that would be a place they would go in terms of just general traffic, she was pretty high on it. Um, she okay. thinks it wouldn't be too steep a learning curve for most adult educators mm -hmm. if you mentioned, oh, Designers for Learning has a hub on OER Commons. They would know what you were talking about. Yeah. Um, you know. that, that was just my concern is, you know, how do we get the biggest bang for our buck the fastest mm -hmm. that we can and get, get this out so that people can actually use it and they can make change, you know, an impact, you know, if this is something that, you know, we're going to spend a lot of time working on and working with service learners. I just want to see people using it. I just don't want it to be something we design and nobody ever uses yeah. it. Yep. And um, so I'm just, you know, I didn't know if OER was kind of a place where, you know, a lot of these instructors already know about and know where to go and we can deliver our content on that and we can just have already built in access to them. That was just my, one of my, yeah, that's what I was thinking. 
Mm -hmm. No, I think you're um, you're you're certainly um, on the right 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 track there, and I, I I'm pretty confident in terms of. Um, I think it is a good a good repository. I've, I've used it myself over the years, and it's one of the early <laughs> the early adopters to this whole OER movement. And it you know it has mm -hmm. has good funding, but um in, in, and kind of going back to what Gilbert was saying, mm -hmm. there is that little that little piece that's like it's not our brand. You know, we're trying. No, to no, no. It. Yeah, and I I didn't you even know. really when he emailed me, I really didn't even think about that, and I thought it was a good point. So you know, yeah. going back to my original you know, statement, I can see the benefits of, of both. And, you know, yep. so well, I'm, I'm not going to be dogmatic about it. I'm so I think if I'm thinking of it in terms of like the scales of where I'm at right now, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this February deadline going, wow, we got a lot to do before mm -hmm. February. Um, let's try to work with the OER folks and get ourselves a hub and, and mm -hmm. start, start building it out with the idea that you know, let's be, get ready to cut bait if it turns out we're not getting the traffic we want. It's not the flexibility we need. Um, mm -hmm. We can do it better on our own and then um, and then think about down the road having a service learning group, as, as Gilbert was saying, um, build it out. Um, mm -hmm. But um, any other thoughts on, um, I don't know, Joe, did you have a chance to play around on OER Commons at all? Um, I know that wasn't something you were necessarily looking at but did you have a chance or any opinions on what we're talking about uh, I did look at it a little bit and uh, I guess based on, along the same lines what you were sharing just a minute ago is that uh, we could use OER to get started you know if there's some sort of fear that we may not be able to customize a repository the way that we want to immediately um, and when we spoke on the phone a little while ago you mentioned that this could be an ongoing thing and an ongoing uh, capacity, but maybe the second version could involve a customized uh, repository that would sort of enhance the branding a bit. Right. Um, that way we would have time to do it. I don't know if that's a, an option or something you're interested in doing. Yeah, and, and yeah, you're right. When I, t I talked, Joe and I talked off offline on the phone uh, about a month ago or three weeks ago, whatever it was, and um, kind of I was kind of laying out a broader, you know, more detailed of the vision we've been talking about. And um, once we have this MOOC set up where the, it's going to be about a 10 week MOOC, I would just love to be able to do that like three times a year, like have a spring, summer, fall. And so we'd have service learners sitting there churning out these OER modules. Um, so yeah, exactly to your point, this isn't a one and done. You know, if we try something on OER Commons, it's a hub and it's, um, it's not, it doesn't meet our needs. It's, you know, I think it, there's certainly a lot of opportunity to do it on our own. Um, so, all right. And then, um, uh, Joe, or I don't know, Joe. What what part were you um, kind of sinking your teeth into? Or did you look at all in terms of what the um, the resources are that people are in uploading or anything like that? Did you have a chance to look at any to any degree of detail? Well, I did see that, um, and I, I think you were talking about this uh, a little bit earlier about the the hubs or the different organizations where they have. Um, it seems like they have all the. Uh, I guess all of their items in one place. So it, would, it seems pretty user friendly. So if we had our, all of our learners uh, navigate toward a hub, I mean, it seems like it would be pretty user friendly. Um, I don't know if that's like a, a cost to create one of those or if it's all. I don't know. Did you guys look at that at all? Let me go, let me go, do a screen share real quick and I'll hop over there. Um, did you guys have a chance to look at all what's involved in, in becoming a hub? <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody um, have a chance to do that or look into that? I looked around and I came across uh, one uh, item, and that was the one author uh, link. Okay, right. So start authoring now. And I was curious yeah. if, uh, if that might be something that we can get our hands into and possibly uh, serve as more of more of a, I don't know, uh, advisor consultant type. Okay, what is that? Um, we'll or the one author? author? Yeah. Is that that thing right here? So this, if I click this, or is that something different? Uh, that might, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Where uh, instructors or facilitators go in there and create their own content. Okay. Uh, of course, they have to align with with OER Commons. But oh, okay. We might but be able to jump in and, and serve as some sort of uh, advisor or consultant type. Okay, and then. But, let me just an idea, just a thought. 
So here's the, uh, so that would be kind of if you're out there on like an individual instructor who would be able to go or serve, service learner, we just kind of go off and put like one off content, right? Um, is that the idea with that versus like these that I, can you see on my screen right now? The microsites versus the differences between microsites and hubs. I haven't, I haven't looked at that. Um, Microsites are custom flexible sites that include all the features available on OER Commons. Microsites allow your users to search resources using a custom taxonomy and a unique URL. Ah! So maybe that's where we could, um, I don't, how did I miss this? Did you, is this something new? Did you guys see this microsites before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I missed that one. Um, the other one, projects, district states, and initiatives make use of hubs to bring groups of educators together to create, organize, and share OER. Okay. So it would seem one of these two would certainly um, be something we might be interested in. So if we click on this, I'm just curious what, it, what the process is to, um, to become one. Does it say anywhere? Oh, is this is what you were talking about before. Open author. I think I see yes. right there. Okay, got it. Okay, my OER. Um, hubs. Okay, connect hubs and groups. Let's click on. Oh, this just keeps taking me back to the same thing. So, and do any of these appear? Have, do any of these look very well developed? A lot of the ones I went into didn't have a lot of material, yeah. which might get then back to what Aaron was saying. Like, would people just come here and go, "Well, this is." not sufficiently built out for our needs. Um, all right. Well, how, okay, I don't, I mean to le totally lead the witness here, but I'm kind of <laughs> drawing conclusions as we're talking. Um, I, again, I keep thinking about this February date. Um, would you guys be comfortable if we did that? If we, if we went down the path that we had you guys help me figure out how to create either a hub or a now that we're seeing here this microsite and we um, and tr try to get the designers for learning hub and or mic uh, microsite up and running mm -hmm. on the OER commons within the mm -hmm. next like 60 days or so mm -hmm. you guys up for that mm -hmm. challenge mm -hmm. and then we can think about bigger picture longer term mm -hmm. going down the uh, and actually, I think it might be better to build our own site after we understand what the functionality is of this, you know, like, what do we like, what don't we like of, um, of the OER Commons. And then I guess I also question for the group, is there any other site that you've seen that's, that's comparable that we're, maybe we're missing? I haven't looked around. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. I, I mean, at least from what uh, our subject matter experts were saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's let's. Yeah, I think it. I mean, I think it's already. You know, I know Gilbert had mentioned the ideal of a brand and creating our own brand, which I think could be a long-term goal. But it already seems like, from our response from, you know, the subject matter experts, that the instructors are already familiar with this, and this would be a place that they're going to they're going to land so okay yep I like it um, all right so can I uh, how would you guys like to uh, to, to tackle this um, should we just start um, let's see I'm, I'm trying to find there's got to be instructions <laughs> like who do we contact to start doing this um, do you guys see anything on the page of who we um, learn more? Our services, professional development and training. Oh, here's that microsites thing again, too. Yeah, if you click on that learn more, it, I think it pops open an email. So you can, I guess you can ask them uh, ah, okay. questions through email. Okay. Okay, perfect. Does, do one of you guys uh, want to um, ex explore this or like take, take the, the lead on um, reaching out to them and, and get us some, some of our questions answered in terms of like what do we need to do like what do we do they just automatically give us one or is there like some application process or something like that um do, do one of you one or more of you want to do that work on that sure i was gonna ask you guys um i've never created a site where it's uh where it's set up like a repository um, maybe you guys have because it's it's a bit foreign to me i'm sure there are templates and things out there would that would it be easier for you guys to do that than to learn about um, OER? 
I'm just kind of curious. Or have you have you built a site like this before? I have not. Have either of you guys um, done anything like this? Or, or how would this compare to your building out of an LMS? How, what, what would you see as like the similarities or differences between this and an LMS, like using Moodle or something like that? Um, I wonder if you can, I wonder if there's capability you can, inc you can use maybe some of, some of what you've done in Moodle in this I don't know I was reading that there was some compatibility it was mentioning with the Moodle so, so I don't know if there is any compatibility with various LMSs or you can share you know links to courses but then you know will the instructors be able to access that so I don't know um, right. from what from what I saw you know looking around at the modules that are on the learning modules and the materials it just it's pretty much just looks like people just placed and store documents on there that the instructors download the PDF or the Word document and then they just, you know, read through it. It has activities for them to do, but it definitely doesn't work like an LMS. It's right. just, it just looks like people have posted, you know, mm -hmm. various learning materials on there. You yeah. know, like, I guess, like instructor guides is essentially what, what I saw. You know what, and that's a good way to put it. Um, that's really what our um, SMEs were telling us in the survey. Is that what the, that's really what they want? Mm -hmm. um, and really making it in an editable document, even like a PDF, not not a PDF, rather. But yeah, a, yeah, like a word. It looked a like word. a lot of it was Word documents, and or even a, you know, like a Google Drive document or or something. Um, that's all it looked like to me. So definitely, I don't think that the functionality is there that you would find in an LMS. But I mean. You've got to deliver, you know, on the level of the instructors. You don't want to build out things that they're not going to be able to use or access. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, I could see them, you know, I mean, if they're, you don't know what kind of, you know, learning space they're in when they're with students or if they're doing it one-on-one -on -one or if they're in the basement of a church or mm -hmm. they're a synagogue or if they're in a prison, you know, they're probably going to have to print these materials out and take them in and may not even have, you know, the ability to project on a screen. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yep. just, you know, starting from the, you know, from the user end, what, what, you know, where are they going to be using these? And I guess we just got to go as simple as possible. But I think it would be, like you said, I think it'd be nice if they could, you know, print it out, add to it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it would be nice if we could encourage instructors maybe in some ways to submit, you know, revised um, yeah. plans. Maybe they teach it, they try it, and they say, you know, well, I think we should add this or that. And maybe this will help other instructors, and because they're the ones that are familiar with the learners, right? Um, so, where it could be more of an open document at some point, or encourage them to help give feedback to what to what we're doing. I don't know. That's just no, my no. That's a, that's exactly. And actually, um, when, when Brian and I were poking around earlier, one thing we liked about let's see if I can find um, some materials that have been created here. Um, clicking on the Minnesota one. Okay, let's try to find something. Um, here's some resources. Um, to, this, to your point, I don't know if you have noticed they they have the ability to rate. Mm -hmm. um, the work and then add comments. And so yeah. like people do that. Um, and this kind of gets back to, I think Joe, um, we're circling back a little bit to your point. Um, it is so different than an LMS, which I think most of us are used to working with. Um, so we're kind of pivoting a little bit and thinking about it in terms of a place, designing a place for the instructors to quickly find material, um, download it, use it as they want, make comments, say this is you know great. It's not, you know, I've, I've amended this and now here you can go over to this place and, uh, you know, link to the, where they've made amendments or whatever it may be, uh, which ties into what, uh, to what Aaron was saying. Yeah. Cause see, th see this is really, to your point too, Aaron, you were saying like instructor guides, that's kind of really what this, this first screen really is. It's, it's telling them wh what things are aligned to. Mm -hmm. There's an abstract, um, telling people what media format things are in. There's a the type of material is a lesson plan. Um, so I guess the question I would also have for the OER Commons folks is how much flexibility do we have to make these taxonomies mm -hmm. match what we, what our deal is? Because, you know, grades mm -hmm. are going to be more aligned to 
to college and career readiness, not necessarily a grade, but there's mm -hmm. like five grade groupings, those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, let's let's. Well, I was going to say Go also, ahead. I don't know, it reminds me of kind of like uh, Merlot. I don't know if you've been to that site. Yes, exactly. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit, but mm -hmm. maybe it looks a lot better. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? Merlot, yep, and then there's, mm -hmm. uh, I think, CK... Mm -hmm. okay, something or another. I and I've used Merlot. I mean, when I'm teaching a class or designing a course, I've used it. People have very original ideas. They, you know, let lessons. They're not complicated. Usually just download a Word document or PDF or whatever. So yeah, that's like, kind of how I compared it. You know, um, And that's another, you know, this is another repository option for us because these are um, like create materials with content builder. Um, but I think, oopsie, it's asking me to log in. Oh, come on. I lost it now. Come on. Now it's not letting me click on my thing. Oh, that's weird. It's not letting me uh, this down a little bit. There we go. Um, well, should, should we, um, so who said they wanted to do this? Uh, Aaron, you were saying, or? No, Joe did. <laughs> oh, Joe was the one, okay. <laughs> Um, so what are some questions that um, we, we should circle to um, circle back with the folks? First of all, what does it take to become <laughs> a hub, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or the microsites. Microsite, okay. Okay, what other questions? Um, flexibility in terms mm -hmm. of a taxonomy mm -hmm. and categ categorization. I guess also to time frame. Um, how fast can we get this up and running? Mm -hmm. um, anything else uh, right out of the gate? Those are kind of the biggies. And so we want this to be uh, accessible by the public, right? Not just between the instructor and the attendees. Yep, exactly. So so anybody could um, could access it. Yeah. So how does this sit with you, Gilbert? Because we are kind of going in, going yeah. very much pretty heavy into the OER Commons at this stage. Do you, mm -hmm. how does it sit? I, I did a similar project, and I was paired up with another uh, a student, and uh, we did uh, we actually created a website on uh, Google Sites, and it was targeted for. Uh, originally, we when we started out the project, uh, we wanted to create a source for students to go to, but then we found later on that we actually ended up. Uh, creating a source for educators to go to uh, and we embedded a uh, you know differentiated learning uh, into the, the, the site so that we had multiple different types of outcomes but yet the same theme same theory but it was more of a uh, uh, you know a project for uh, project-based learning type mm -hmm. um, so you know we had different types of uh, deliverables that were available and showed how to showed how to uh, do them and uh, showed how we kind of gave the teacher a, a uh, you know, kind of took of a, a guide on the side approach uh, for the educator and uh, provided the resource for them. And uh, they were able to print the resources, view the resources online. Uh, we had links to other external resources aside from, you know, what we already had. And I kind of gave a brief description of how uh, the whole uh, process would go. So, so it's, it sounds like you're saying you would be good, a good person <laughs> to help us uh, kind of create like a style guide for this then, right? In terms of what, so like once we have the service learners in their class, we have to give them some guidance in terms of you have to make an instructor guide, you have to make a whatever. Is That's kind of what you, right. you obviously thought through that then. On yes, your, and we had to align, you know, and, and in South Texas, we had to align with the, uh, the uh, the uh, resource uh, what is it whatever it is that the the commons that we have here in Texas I forget what it is off the top of my head but uh, we had to align ourselves and provide uh, you know resources for that as well and show how they align with uh, the uh, um, the core requirements the mm -hmm. curriculum requirements yeah uh huh uh huh so so would you mind um, helping us with that a little bit for uh, for, for this. 
in terms of um, of, of creating those uh, that kind of the the, the um, template or the the requirements that the service learners are going to have to think about, like or what what they'll populate on the on the site. You want to you want to think through that or give us some recommendations on that. Sure. Do you have that link, by the way, of your? I do actually. I'm going to pull it up, and if you don't mind, let's run through it right quick. Yeah, let me. Um, a, 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 a I'll hit stop share, and then can you hit, what it looked like. Can you hit screen share on your end? I, I don't know what your interface looks like. Sure. Because then I, I think you should um, be able to. Hang on a second here. Where am I? <laughs> so what kind of traction did you have Gilbert then uh, on your site did, did you have a sense that people are using it still or no it was it's I don't think uh, people used it <laughs> <laughs> you're honest <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Now, oh, for our purposes, the, the traffic's going to be driven from the MOOC, right? For, uh, yeah, for the people posting, exactly. And then as far as users, like those instructors who will be using it, you know, could be anywhere. You know, could be. This oh, OK. Is, uh, so it's the Google Sites. I see. OK. Yeah, this is our site. This is a site that uh, another colleague and I uh, authored. and. Uh, Again, it, it started out as a, as a student project, and then it turned into a, a more of a teacher's guide. And uh, again, we use differentiated learning. Uh, all of this was created in Google Sites, and we just kind of put it together. Um, you know, we, we, we added a few different types of methods of how the, uh, the deliverables will, will uh, be, be uh, measured and, and provided. Uh, different types of uh, rubrics, mm -hmm. writing purposes, and that sort of thing. Um, kind of gave the, the, uh, the uh, educator a guide to go by. Here we are at the needs assessment and kind of gave them a brief discussion on what we're looking for uh, as far as, you know, what your needs are, um, how, it, how it would break down, and then uh, the different options that were available. And we had uh, different examples and instructions to download. Uh, all these are available. So then th this would be good for, so basically this is what our service learners would be on a much smaller scale because we're only designing like a, <laughs> a 30 minute lesson or whatever. But the idea would be on the OER Commons, they would have, um, an abridged version of what you're showing here, right? For each module that's created. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So that would be very, very helpful if you could think through then for a 30 minute lesson, you know, what, what types of things, mm -hmm. what types of things would do we want our service learners to create to get to this whole notion of it being the, um, and I'm going back to what Aaron called it, the, you know, the instructor guide and the, um, mm -hmm. and then the basic resources. So would you mind kind of chewing on that and, and, and giving us some recommendations on what you think, okay. what you think we should have the service learners do? And then ultimately then that will be developed into the style guide. So once the st service learners start in February, we'll say, this is what you're building to. You are going to be creating a 30 minute lesson that contains whatever mm -hmm. it is that you come up with. Um, so it, there's some degree of uniformity across what people are making. That's great. Can you share that link? Send us an email or send me an email with that link. That would be great. Sure. Gilbert, can you include me too? I'd like to look at it. Sure. Thank you. Uh huh. And uh, so, any Aaron, anything that we mentioned that you want to sink your teeth in? Um, um, I would like to. I'd actually like to work with Gilbert and on the requirements. Okay. So, if he doesn't mind. No, no, um, no. Okay, I'd like to, that, that sounds interesting to me. That's perfect. I really appreciate it, you guys. That, that's huge, actually, because, the, you know, I envision, as I said, we have to 
get these folks pretty quickly when they when they enroll in the course to understand what mm -hmm. it is that they're <laughs> what are you here for you know and so we hit them up right away with uh with a style guide saying okay you're going to be mm -hmm. developing resources that'll reside on oer commons um these are the parameters of what it is um yeah that's clearly something that we have to um have to finalize sooner rather than later as far as the course and then um joe you're good with um being our uh, our bridge to uh, to the OER Commons folks and reaching out and try to make contact and, and find out what it is we need to do. You're good with that? Absolutely. Excellent. You guys, this is great. Thank you. I just love it when <laughs> we have, people are getting what I'm saying now. <laughs> We're not like getting blank looks. And, uh, and Gilbert, I kind of go back to what your original, um, your thought, you had really excellent thoughts on why we should go it alone, but do you think mm -hmm. this is Good bridge to uh, to start here on our way toward maybe potentially ultimately down the road building our own. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I'm kind of leading the witness tonight because I kind of have my <laughs> my mind set on this is where we're going, but <laughs> trying to keep an open mind at the same time. And I totally what you said, uh, Gilbert. Actually, the re reason I resisted this all along was the branding. Here we are, a new nonprofit trying to make a name for ourselves, and uh, mm -hmm. you know the thought of of not being able to do it on our own didn't sit real well with me. So, okay, well, very good. Let's, um, let's then let's circle back. Um, let's look at our calendars real quick. How about if in like, uh, would three weeks make sense if we mm -hmm. regrouped and kind of compared notes at that point? Mm -hmm. um, let me pull up my calendar. Where does that put us? 29th. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody here going to AECT in Indianapolis? No. Nobody's going? Okay. No. I thought that would have... Okay. 29th. Yeah, 29th works for me. Does that work for you guys? Mm-hmm. Okay, so October 29th, same time, 7 o'clock Central, yeah. 8 Eastern. Okay. Very good. And by that point, if um, if Joe, hopefully you can give us some uh, in input in terms of what we um, what we need to do for the OER Commons folks. And if Gilbert and um, and Aaron, if you could start giving us a rundown of, of what the style guide is going to look like for our service learners, I think we would be in good shape. All righty. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. All righty. Good evening. Good night. All right. Bye. -bye.